Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, inflation up and GDP down. Not a good combination. No, not yet a recession. However, with soaring inflation, 8% in the first quarter, and that from a broad-based measure of prices, it does raise a question. Are we on the front end of a recession? Well, here's what President Biden tried to say about it today. I'm not concerned about a recession. And I mean, you're always concerned about uh, a recession. No. Got that? Well, all right. Let's try to be a little more specific than the president. First of all, real GDP fell 1.4 percent in the first quarter ending March. That's the first decline since the pandemic output loss in the second quarter of 2020, almost two years ago. However, underneath the hood, consumer spending did rise 2.7 percent. Housing investment was up 2.1 percent, and business investment was up 9.2 percent. Those are very decent numbers. It could be why stocks went up almost 700 points today. Now, what some people call core GDP, which is consumption plus investments, C plus I for the aficionados, core growth rose 3.7 percent at an annual rate. That's a good number. It was a big trade deficit that chopped off over three percentage points from the top line number and a slowdown in inventory accumulation that took out almost one percent. Now, one reason for the big trade deficit is an overstimulated demand from the two trillion dollars spending bill over a year ago that launched the eight percent inflation. Now, let me add monthly job gains are still good, although I want to note that contra Joe Biden new jobs are not being created. The monthly job gains are simply a return to work from pandemic job losses. Right now, the civilian labor force is still 1.6 million jobs below the pre-pandemic peak. And if the Trump job creation trend line were still in place, the labor force would be 6 million jobs higher than it is today. So frankly, Biden boasting about new jobs is simply wrong. During his tenure, we're just treading water. Now, are we at the front end of a recession? Is there a recession risk? Well, yes and yes. Whenever inflation is significantly above GDP, that's one definition of stagflation, and that's where we are today, stagflation. And history shows stagflations usually lead to recessions, or to be more direct, high inflation usually leads to a recession. Remember, the Fed has not yet taken the punch ball away. They're talking the talk, but they're not yet really walking the walk. That's why recession is such a significant threat. And then there's Biden policies. I mean, today he prattled on and on again about how Republicans don't pay their fair share. Now, that's kind of a new wrinkle. He usually just attacks billionaires and millionaires and corporations. Today, he just attacked Republicans. He probably didn't mention Democrats because there's so few that will fess up to still being Biden Democrats anymore, but I digress. Elon Musk, he's not a Republican or a Democrat, he's a libertarian, but he paid $11 billion in taxes last year. That's the largest single tax collection in American history. Sorry, Joe. The absolute dumbest thing the Bidens could do is follow the advice of Senator Chuck Schumer, who said, and I'll quote, if you want to get rid of inflation, the only way to do it is to undo a lot of the Trump tax cuts and raise rates. Well, go ahead, raise rates, raise taxes. That will guarantee a recession, Chuck. It will also guarantee skyrocketing unemployment. That's how dumb that idea is. The Trump tax cuts, especially the corporate tax cuts, are not only responsible for the limited prosperity we have. I mean, note the increases in business investment and equipment in today's GDP report. But they also pay for themselves with a gusher of record revenues. That, according to the IRS. The Laffer curve worked again. Lower tax rates, more people working, higher incomes, more tax collections, less tax avoidance, all equals more tax revenues at lower tax rates. The best way to deal with skyrocketing inflation is to stop federal spending, stop deficit finance, stop money printing, Stop choking off the supply side of the economy with overregulation and the attack on fossil fuels. Forty years ago, Art Laffer and Robert Mundell argued the best fix for inflationary recession was tighter money to vanquish inflation and tax cuts to rejuvenate the economy. 
That was the policy backbone of the Reagan boom that lasted over two decades. The Trump tax cuts that were also accompanied by a strong dollar worked wonders during his brief tenure. But if Democrats and or Republicans are going to keep on spending and taxing and money printing, then they're going to guarantee even higher inflation and ultimately a deeper and more painful recession. It's all food for thought. All I'll say is the cavalry's coming. I hope they know what they're doing.